I wanted to give you a little update on how our garden is doing this year. We're definitely having a hot summer, but we seem to have a little more rain than last year, so that is really nice. The grass actually still has hints of green, and the tomatoes this year are doing great. I can't believe how incredibly sweet and tasty they are. So we're really happy with that. And I also managed to finally grow basil in the right way. I think separating the plants and also the way that we harvest it now has made all the difference. So we're really enjoying all the fresh harvest and foods from the garden. And the funny thing is, I don't know if you remember that video I did on how I didn't like how the wall turned out of the hangar that we had rendered by a professional. It was originally covered by Ivy and Virginia Creeper, I think is the name for Vigne Vierge. And we had to cut it all back when we had the wall rendered and then we figured we didn't want to plant it back because it, you know, the Vigne Vierge loses its gorgeous leaves in fall. It is a spectacular sight to watch though. It's so gorgeous with all the colors, but we thought it would be a lot of work to remove all the leaves from the gravel. But then we noticed that, you know, it's been three years 
But we started noticing that it's coming back. It just grew back. You know how strong nature is. And it didn't just grow back against the wall, but also uh, a little further into the potager. So I think actually the uh, racine, what's at the roots, are all underneath the gravel under the path. Anyway, we decided to put up a trellis so we could decide where and how it grows. And I have to say, I quite like what it looks like and I think the wall might be a lot more beautiful now. Now for everybody that's watching this and freaking out, I know many of you have said no, 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 don't ever put plant ivy, it will damage your walls. I know because we had ivy in our house in the Netherlands, but this isn't like ivy, this doesn't damage, it doesn't even stick to the wall the same way and it definitely doesn't damage the wall so don't worry about that. And yeah, I am kind of secretly looking forward to fall to see how gorgeous all the leaves will be of this plant. It is absolutely gorgeous. We have made more progress in the garden because we have finally installed the door that closes the swimming pool area off from the street, which is obviously very important. So we've used the old door that used to be um, the door from the old kitchen to the old cellar. And I'm not even sure if I've even ever shown this, but we have restored this door and I really think it looks amazing. And other than that, we're doing lots of pruning and trimming and just maintenance work in the garden. We have wild blackberries, I think. The word for blackberry in French is mûr, but the ones that grow here are called ronces, and I think it's something like a wild blackberry. It grows everywhere, so everywhere in the garden it keeps showing up, and it's very difficult to remove, and it hurts, it has a lot of thorns and everything. So we've been doing that, pruning all the hedges, just making sure everything looks nice.
And yeah, like I said, we've had more rain than previous summers. So I am quite happy with how good the garden's doing. But one thing that failed horribly this year is the seeds for the wildflowers that I've sown. Maybe I haven't been watering them enough. The spring was quite dry, but really nothing really has grown. Just a few of the cosmos have come up. So I've cleaned out the flower bed, taken all of the weeds out. Some of the flowers that, like the marigold and the cosmos, that did do well, well not well because I found footage from 2021 when we first rebuilt the garden after completely destroying it to install the septic tank and the flower bed was so gorgeous and when I saw that I was like oh yes this definitely failed this year but I've sown new seeds and will keep you posted on if that is going to give us some flowers maybe at the late summer early fall The other really cool thing that I wanted to share with you is that maybe you've seen me buy these drawings of Beaune at the Brocante that I went to in Nolet recently. And I bought two drawings or gravures or I don't even know what it's called. And the lady was trying to explain to me where in Beaune that was. And I was like, I really don't recognize it. And she talked about the chapel and I was like, I know that chapel that's right next to one of my favorite restaurants and she said yes but it's behind there and so when I was in Bowen the other day I decided to go try to find it and I actually did so it was just I don't know I know Bowen is an old city and I know there's lots of history here but just knowing that you found this image of what it was like I don't know how many hundreds of years ago it just kind of makes you realize even more how long these buildings have actually been here and who knows how many people have walked these cobbled streets. I'm sitting in this amazing spot with my laptop, with all the beautiful pictures that I've made over the last few months. As you know, I couldn't publish my cookbook earlier because I did not have all the beautiful images that I'd gathered on my Instagram weren't suitable for print. So I figured I wanted to take a couple of more pictures so that I would be able to turn the cookbook into a nice coffee table book. Not just recipes, but beautiful images of France so that you would feel like you're in France, like a small escape to France, really. So I'm creating the cookbook in just a a kind of Canva template. But now, of course, I have to put it into this real... Uh, I don't know what that's called, but let's say a template that um, that Amazon can use. And that's where I completely feel blocked because I know it's too technical and it scares me. And I know that Olaf's going to help me, of course. 
Uh, so I'm kind of uh, procrastinating, to be quite honest. I've been sending messages to friends. Uh, I had a friend reach out like, hey, do you want to have a coffee? And I said, hey, do you want to come hang out with me in the vineyards? <laughs> so, yeah, I probably should try to... Um, yeah, I'm just going to get to it now because I know a lot of you are waiting and I don't want to keep you waiting and I want you to keep me accountable. I want to have it finished by early October. So that gives me, because this month is nearly gone, August, because we are going on a holiday and I'm going on a camping trip afterwards and then early September and end of August is always busy with the boys going back to school and I have lots of ideas for filming but uh, yeah, I want to get it finished because it's getting better every day. So let's just get to it, shall we? to close this video by taking you to the Beaujolais wine region which is just about an hour and a half south of where we live. Now to you it probably looks all the same but I can really see how different this wine region is from where we live. I always really like coming here I think it is so beautiful so I'm just going to share this little family trip with you. We went on a day that they said it would really, really be very windy where we live. And it looked like the weather was going to be a bit calmer here, but when we arrived, as you can see, it was just as windy as at home. So I can't 
put in any of the original audio, but just enjoy this footage of the gorgeous hills of the Beaujolais, and I will leave you with that. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.